Recently, a friend of mine gave me this bookshelf speaker. You know, the type of loudspeaker with a big empty enclosure to which you can connect an already amplified audio signal. Anyway, even though I appreciated the gift, I had no proper use for it. But since I had a couple of lithium ion batteries and a few other components laying around from previous projects, I thought to myself, why not create something useful out of the speaker? So in this video, I will show you how I turned it into an awesome portable boombox, whose battery level is monitored by an LED bar display and can withstand around 100 hours of continuous music playback. And since the boombox has built-in USB ports for charging and the power and amplifier can be activated separately, it is perfect for all outdoor trips. So let's not waste any more time and let's get started with the build. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. One fact about them. JLC PCB provides customized PCB service to companies and engineers with quantities of 5 to 50,000 pieces. Upload your Gerber files to order high quality PCBs for only $2. First off, I removed the cap of the loudspeakers and took them out of the enclosure by removing their mounting screws. And after pulling out all the insulation material, I unscrewed a circuit board at the bottom of the box and pulled it out as well. This circuit is a so-called passive audio crossover, which mainly consists of coils and capacitors. Its job is to divide the frequency range of the music and send the high frequencies to the small speaker and the low frequencies to the big speaker. This way you get an overall better sound experience. But since this audio crossover was pretty old, I got myself a new one for the boombox. Nevertheless, after I cut off all the wiring, I pushed out the short audio connector and started making a suitable size for control panel on the backside of the speaker, according to the dimensions of my favorite mounting components, in this case a hinge and a snap lock. As soon as I got a decent looking rectangle, I dribbled a hole in each corner of it and afterwards utilized the jigsaw to cut it out completely. And since I'm not the best when it comes to following a line with a jigsaw, I had to treat all the sides with a file afterwards. Then I measured out the height and width of the rectangle, which was 16 by 14.5 cm, and drew such a rectangle on an additional piece of 6mm thick MDF. To cut it out though, I utilized the circular saw this time, but since it did not fit perfectly in the cavity of the speaker, I had to redo the file treatment until everything fitted snugly. That means it was time to position all the required components that we need access to on the control boards and mark their position. And I think this is a good time to tell you about the utilized components and how I will wire them up later. For starters, I got myself 16 lithium ion batteries, which were the type INR18650 25R, out of which I wanted to create a 4S 4P battery pack with a nominal voltage of 14.8 volts and a capacity of 10 amp hours. Since 12 of those batteries were still brand new, which means all their voltages were pretty much the same, I quickly created three 4P packs by simply connecting four batteries each in parallel. For the parallel connections, I utilized a bit thinner nickel strips than for the series connections, so that if one battery goes bad in the parallel pack, the nickel strip connection can be interrupted through the overcurrent. And of course, for the welding, I used the K welds. But feel free to watch my e-bike battery pack video if you want more information on how to create a lithium ion battery pack. Now the remaining 4 batteries for the last pack were not new and thus featured all a different voltage potential. So I had to charge them all up through my lap inch power supply before joining them the same way as the previous 3 packs. And so I got my 4 packs, which I all charged up to 4.2 volts before creating the series connections with thicker nickel strips. As soon as I was done with the welding connections, according to the scheme, I then wrapped the battery pack up in Kapton tape, 
double checked all the voltage potentials and started soldering wires to the terminals in order to hook up a BMS which adds overcurrent and over discharge protection and offers a balanced charge feature. But since this particular one decided to not work correctly, I went with another one which did the job without a problem. And just like that we got our power source whose positive terminal will connect to a simple switch which will then power the amplifier, 5V USB ports and the battery level indicator circuit. If you want to learn more about the battery level indicator circuit, then make sure to watch the project video about it. Now for the amp I utilized this TPA 3100D2 board, which is a 20W stereo class D audio amp. You might think 20 watts does not sound like much, but as you can see in this demonstration, it can get quite loud. And best of all, the amp only draws around 70 mA maximum while doing so. That means the battery can power the amp for around 100 hours without a problem. But anyway, the amp's input is connected to two resistors, which turn the stereo signal of the audio jack's music signal into a suitable mono signal. The output of the amp is then connected to the audio crossover and the crossover to the loudspeakers. Additionally, I connected the SD pin aka shutdown pin of the amp through another switch to ground, so that we can turn off the amp separately if we, for example, only want to charge up our phone. And speaking of charging up, I did not create this 5V USB charger gadget, I instead got it for cheap from Amazon. Last but not least, we got an XT60 connector for the wiring, so that we can charge up the battery pack. And with that being said, let's get back to the control panel. After determining all the dimensions of the components, I marked them onto the board and utilized the fitting drill to create all the circular cutouts. For the rectangular cutouts though, I first created a couple of holes and then used small files to create the required shape. And as soon as all parts fitted snugly in the cutouts, I marked the center line on the top side of the speaker in order to determine the mounting holes for metal handle. After drilling them, I test mounted the handle, which functioned just like a handle, and removed it afterwards immediately. The reason for that was that I still had to spray paint the whole speaker as well as the control panel with black paint. But before doing that, I temporarily mounted the two hinges and the snap lock in place with small universal screws, so that I later still knew where I wanted to position them. And now that I got my beautiful looking speaker as well as the control panel, it was finally time for the assembly. First off, I added new cushioned feet to the speaker. Then I mounted the XT60 connector, LEDs, audio jack and switches in place with some two component adhesive. And while I was at it, I also secured the battery pack, audio crossover circuit, the amp and the battery level indicator circuit inside the enclosure with two component adhesive as well. But only after I added the necessary wires to all the circuits. Next I mounted the 5V USB ports and finally started connecting all the components to one another through solder connections and two Vago terminals. And to be on the safe side, it is definitely recommended to utilize heat shrink tubing to prevent shorts. And once the wiring was complete, I hooked up the loudspeakers, secured them to the enclosure and added the hinges and the snap lock, which basically means that this project was complete. Now I'm very happy with the end result and will definitely use it in my upcoming vacation. If you enjoyed the project slash video, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time, is what you would expect as my last words in a video. But since this is an audio project, here's some raw audio footage from the boombox, enjoy.